Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from arterytutors.com and welcome to this video on calculating the volume of a gas using moles. So in this video we're going to look at an example question uh, and we're going to show you the answer and how we work it out and how we calculate it. Uh, we're going to be using the mole equation as well and crucially the ideal gas equation. Now you need to check your specification to make sure uh, that you do need to actually know the ideal gas equation. I know since the new specifications there is some extra exam boards that have to know it. For example, I know AQA needs to do it and uh, I think OCR Salters as well, the Salters course, has also uh, gained the ideal gas equation. So uh, just make sure, check your specification um, because this video may not apply to you uh, if you don't need to know the ideal gas equation, which is this here. So that's what you're looking for. Okay, so we're going to go through this, uh, this question here. And so this question starts off by saying, how much gas is made by 0.12 grams of magnesium ribbon and hydrochloric acid at 298 Kelvin and 100 kilopascals of pressure. And we have R to be 8.31. Now they've given us the equation here. So this is magnesium plus two HCl for magnesium chloride and hydrogen. So this is just literally an acid plus metal reaction and it will give you your traditional salt and hydrogen gas as well. So the first thing when you approach these types of questions is you should work out the moles. Um, as a general rule, I like to say that if in doubt, work out the moles, because from the moles, you can work out loads of different things. Um, for example, you can work out anything in the ideal gas equation. If you know the moles, you can work out concentrations, you can work out um, masses, you can work out MRs, you can work out loads of things. So as a general rule, if you ever get stuck on these questions, work out the moles and see where you can go from there. So that's what we're going to do. We're actually going to work out the number of moles. So we can work out the moles by using mass over MR. And you can see here that we need to work out, we've got a mass of magnesium. And obviously we know the MR of magnesium because you'll have a periodic table. And once we know the moles of magnesium, we can then work out the number of moles um, of our gas that we're trying to work out. So, um, which is our hydrogen gas that we're trying to work out there. And since we know the number of moles of that, we can then use our ideal gas to work out the volume. So let's make a start. So the um, let's write this in, let's do it in blue. Okay, so we're gonna work out the number of moles of magnesium. So because it's a solid, this is magnesium solid, we're going to use uh, the mass over MR equation, which is uh, 0.12 grams. And we're gonna divide that by the uh, molecular, or the atomic mass, sorry, of uh, magnesium. And the atomic mass is 24.3. So if you look in your periodic table, you'll find it there. And if we put that into our calculator, uh, we should come out with a value of 0 0.0050 moles. We'll put mole on the end there. Okay, so this is the number of moles of magnesium. Now, uh, when you're working out these things, and uh, we need to use our molar ratio in our equation, this is why the equation needs to be balanced. You can see here that the only gas we're producing is hydrogen. This is a um, this is a, a salt, so it would be a solid form or dissolved in solution. So your magnesium, in this case it would be solution, but your magnesium to hydrogen is one to one ratio. So the number of moles of uh, hydrogen gas is going to be the same as this. So actually we're gonna put that over here as well. So the number of moles of this is 0 0.0050 moles. Okay, now that's important because we need to work out the number of moles in our ideal gas equation over there. So now we know the moles, we need to work out, the question did ask, um, how much gas is made. So in this case, we're trying to work out the volume of gas that's made. Now to do that, we need to rearrange our ideal gas equation, which is this one here. So um, the ideal gas equation you can see is quite a big equation. Um, and the way in which we can do this is if you're reasonably decent at mass, this should be relatively straightforward. So to work out the volume, we divide this side by the pressure to get rid of pressure. And so we divide that side by pressure as well to make sure that uh, both sides are equal. Now, if you're not sure on how to rearrange an ideal gas equation, I have done a video that looks into um, how you do it and a quick method to show you how to do it. So if you click on the link below, you can have a look at that one there. Okay, so uh, in this case, we're going to write it over here. So I'm gonna put uh, volume equals, and we said it was NRT over P. Uh, show your equation as well. You actually get a mark for uh, showing your equation and then putting your numbers in as well. So um, it's always worth showing your work and make sure it's really easy for the examiner to see how you've worked it out. So if we put our numbers in here, uh, the N bit is the number of moles that we've just worked out, which is 0 0.005. Okay, 
Uh, we're going to multiply that by R. Now, R is our uh, gas constant. This is uh, 8.31. It's given, given to you in the exam, uh, which makes it a little bit easy, so you don't need to worry about trying to remember this number. So this is just 8.31. Uh, and we're going to multiply that by the temperature. This is at room temperature, so it's 298. 298 Kelvin, there we go. And we're going to divide all that by the pressure. Now our pressure is in 100 kilopascals. Uh, according to the ideal gas equation, it must be in pascals. So we need to multiply this by 1,000 to turn it into pascals. That's really important. Make sure you convert that into pascals. So that's 100,000 pascals. Okay, so if we put this into our calculator, we should get a volume. So the volume uh, we should get is 0 0.000124. Okay, and the units of this is meters cubed. Volume in the ideal gas equation as standard is meters cubed. Um, so you've got to really watch out for that as well. So there's little tiny little pitfalls, although the calculation is pretty straightforward, the units are the really kind of big thing here that you've got to make sure you get right. Now, um, that is obviously the units in meters cubed. However, uh, it's normally best uh, to perhaps write it into centimeters cubed if they ask in particular. In this case, they haven't, but I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. Um, now, you need to be able to convert these things quite readily. Um, converting from meters cubed to centimeters cubed um, is actually multiplying by a million. Now, if you're not sure why we multiply by a million in this case, then I have done a video on how you calculate and how you can convert between units. So if you just click on the link below, you can have a look at that video there, because it is really important being able to convert between units correctly. So if I take that number there, convert times it by a million, uh, we should get the volume in centimeters cubed. Um, now, you don't need to calculate it for this one, but it's 124 centimeters cubed. Um, of gas that is produced. Uh, this is hydrogen gas. And so there's our volume. It's not a massive amount of gas, uh, but therefore we didn't start off with that. Uh, another thing as well, um, they might, just from a practical point of view, this is the theoretical amount that you should produce, 124 centimeters cubed. Um, it's quite likely that when you do this for practical, uh, practically, actually for real life, uh, your volume may not be uh, as big as that um, because you might lose some of your product or not all of your reactants has reacted. Um, so all these little things that might just slip one of these questions in there, asking you to comment on the um, uh, on that number and comparing it with something else. You might work out yield, for example, or atom economy. So examples like to kind of link these things um, together and don't just leave them in isolation. So um, just think about it practically as well. What does this number mean? But um, there you go, it's pretty straightforward calculation. Watch out for units here, there's a big unit one here. Um, and uh, make sure you know about the significance of this number and the fact that this is a theoretical value. And in practice, you might not get the same. That's it, bye-bye.